Mesdames. I call to order the third plenary meeting of the second high level United Nations Conference on South South Cooperation. In order to assist uh, the speakers, a clock uh, will appear on the screen. May I kindly remind participants of the agreed uh, time limit of five hour minutes and that longer versions of the statements can be made available on the conference website. The microphones will switch off uh, automatically at five minutes, 30 seconds. We are unfortunately obliged to take these steps uh, because the time for the general debate is limited. The point is to allow all speakers who ask for the floor to be able to do so, to, to speak. Thank you in advance for your kind cooperation. Je donne, uh, maintenant... I now give the floor to Thailand. Qui agit au nom de Speaking on behalf of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Thailand, please. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to deliver this statement on behalf of the 10 member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, namely Brunei Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos PDR, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Vietnam, and Thailand. At the outset, ASEAN expresses its sincere congratulations and appreciation to the hosts, the government and the people of Argentina for their generosity and hospitality. ASEAN associates itself with the statement delivered by His Excellency, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the State of Palestine, on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. Mr. President, in line with the core principles of South-South cooperation, ASEAN was born in 1967 out of mutual interests and common challenges faced then by its member countries. The group has since continued to further strengthen its regional solidarity and cooperation. With respect for sovereignty and diversity, non-interference, shared commitment, and collective responsibility to regional peace, security, and prosperity. ASEAN also aims to accelerate economic growth, social progress, and cultural development in the spirit of equality and partnership. Today, ASEAN's per capita income has expanded over 33 times. The number of people in absolute poverty dropped from 138 to 44 million in 15 years. Its intra-regional trade is increasing at 1.5% each year and is expected to reach 375 billion US dollars by 2025. Indeed, ASEAN has a successful story to tell regarding its South-South cooperation. So allow me to share a few points with you today. First, ASEAN recognizes and respects the diversities of countries in the region. Made up of LDCs, LLDCs, SITs, and MICs, it is crucial that our cooperation takes into account the specific realities and challenges faced by each member state. Second, we all, will always make sure that we put people at the center as we strive to further enhance our development cooperation. South-South cooperation within ASEAN has grown, matured, and reached the stage that we have become a community with three pillars of cooperation, political and security, economic and social cultural. Our cooperation has intensified and expanded to several sectors, including trade, investment, connectivity, science, technology and innovation, humanitarian, resilience building and response to disasters, health and youth, among others. Development and sustainability have long been the focus of ASEAN's work, implemented through its economic and socio-cultural pillars. The 2030 Agenda and the SDGs help provide the framework for ASEAN to deepen its existing cooperation even further, with the expansion to the untapped potential new areas, 
cooperate with more diverse partners, and engage with multi-stakeholders. Following the adoption of the 2030 Agenda, ASEAN has worked with UNSCAP and identified the complementarities between this global agenda and the ASEAN Community Vision 2025 to enhance ASEAN-UN cooperation in areas such as poverty eradication, infrastructure and connectivity, sustainable consumption and production, sustainable management of resources and resilience building. The contributions of triangular cooperation have also been highly valued by ASEAN for bringing in additional resources, variety of know-how, and capacity building support. ASEAN has long enjoyed positive cooperation with its dialogue partners on many areas of mutual interest, and we will continue to further promote such partnerships. This year, under Thailand's chairmanship, ASEAN will launch the ASEAN Center for Sustainable Development Studies and Dialogue to further promote research and capacity building and provide a dialogue platform with external partners to push forward the SDGs implementation. We welcome the interest by a number of partners to support this center, and we look forward to working closely with them. Lastly, in addition to intra-regional cooperation, cooperation between regions is crucial and beneficial in promoting learning by example and sharing of successes and lessons learned with respect to sustainable development across regions. ASEAN is keen to continue sharing our practices as an active and fruitful example of South-South and triangular cooperation with other regions and sub-regions, as well as exploring new potential inter-regional cooperation. Being mindful of the ongoing UN development system repositioning, ASEAN also looks forward to working with the reinvigorated UNDS to further make South-South and triangular cooperation even more meaningful and impactful to the lives of our people on the ground. Mr. President, let me conclude by congratulating all for achieving a consensual outcome for this conference. We all share the same goal to advance South-South and triangular cooperation, and we need to work together to make collective progress without leaving anyone behind. You can count on ASEAN's continued commitment in this regard. I thank you, Mr. President. Merci à la Thailand. I thank uh, Thailand uh, on behalf uh, of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and I now give the floor to Minister Saribero. I, I also have in my own na national capacity. Je vous donne la parole en, en votre nom de. Uh, sir, I give you the floor on behalf of your country. President, ever since the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action back in 1978, South-South cooperation has become one of the essential modalities supporting partnership and cooperation in nearly all aspects and areas of development. This has gone far beyond its initial recognition as technical cooperation. Most importantly, the role of South-South cooperation has become part and parcel of the international community's pursuit of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So as we gather here this week to review the tremendous opportunities and challenges of South-South cooperation, Thailand wishes to offer a few thoughts as follows. Firstly, South-South cooperation can only be achieved when it puts people at the center and provides space for both inclusive and flexible development in responding to each country's needs. South-South cooperation allows developing countries to learn and adapt from one another based on each country's unique development experience, as well as socio-cultural and geographical backgrounds. Therefore, in South-South cooperation, every country has something to share, no matter how large or small they may be. In Thailand, we have our own homegrown approach towards sustainable development, known as the Sufficiency Economy Philosophy, or SEP, articulated by His Majesty the late King Pumipun Adunyadet. SEP is a thinking process that lays out its foundation, aimed at addressing the root cause of problems and producing sustainable outcomes. Placing importance on empowering people, households, and communities, it can be seen as a universal approach for sustainability that can be adapted to all sectors and at all levels. Through our SEP for SDGs partnership initiative, Thailand has been sharing this practical approach with many countries from Asia to the Pacific, from Africa to Latin America. We have also cooperated with other development partners in pursuing the application of SEP in specific fields based on the practical interests and development needs of our partner countries. Secondly, 
Platforms for dialogue and engagement remain an important tool for the strengthening of partnerships in South-South cooperation. To provide an opportunity for such partnership, Thailand, together with SCAP and UNOS, hosted the regional consultation on South-South cooperation in Asia and the Pacific and the inaugural Asia-Pacific DG Forum for South-South and Triangular Cooperation in June last year. The latter was a forum that, for the first time, provided for heads of national agencies of the Asia-Pacific who are responsible for development cooperation to share good practices and experiences as well as address common challenges in South-South and Triangular Cooperation. We are gratified that both the consultation and the forum have contributed to the preparation and the outcome of this conference. Just last month, Thailand and UNICEF launched a South-South Cooperation Initiative on the elimination of mother-to-child transmission of HIV and syphilis. This initiative will facilitate access to Thailand's good practices and lessons learned through a well-structured, impactful, and sustainable South-South and Triangular cooperation for partner countries in the region and beyond. Thirdly and lastly, South-South cooperation is an important means of reinforcing cooperation at all levels, including the regional development architecture. At the regional and sub-regional levels, ASEAN has seen one of the most vibrant manifestations of South-South cooperation and serves strong evidence that South-South cooperation is critical in forging both development and regional integration. ASEAN has played a central role in shaping regional cooperation and integration through the ASEAN Community Vision 2025. We have, for this reason, ASEAN has actively sought to forge closer relations with external partners as well as with other regional organizations. As the current chair of ASEAN for 2019, under the theme Advancing Partnership for Sustainability, and as ASEAN Coordinator on Sustainable Development, Thailand has launched a number of initiatives to support development cooperation through South-South and Triangular Cooperation. We wish to reiterate the ongoing efforts of ASEAN in enhancing synergies with our partners in the realization of the SDGs and the promotion of Partnership for Sustainable Development. In conclusion, Mr. President, despite the enormous progress made, South-South cooperation is admittedly not without its flaws, like any other development frameworks and approaches. As the host country of the United Nations regional headquarters, as a long-standing and committed member of the United Nations, and as a candidate for the ECOSOC membership for the year 2020 to 2022, Thailand is firmly committed to joining hands with our partners in pushing forward together the global efforts in advancing sustainable global partnership through South-South and Triangular Cooperation. In so doing, we seek to fulfill our commitment to the SDG's ultimate goal of leaving no one behind. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank uh, the distinguished representative of Thailand, and I now give the floor to Ms. Teresa Ribeiro, Deputy Secretary of State for Cooperation of Portugal. Dear President, um, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the protocol observed, first of all, allow me to express my gratitude and congratulations to Argentina for its warm hospitality and outstanding organization of this conference in this beautiful city of Buenos Aires. I couldn't start my intervention without expressing my deepest condolences for the victims of the cyclone Idai that inflicted a great devastation in Mozambique, uh, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. Portugal is playing its part in this particular by providing support through medical, civil protection, search and rescue, and engineer teams uh, and appropriate equipment. Based on a multi country approach, and not just in a bilateral relation between countries and regions, triangular cooperation is a key tool to promote multilateralism and has an enhanced role in handling it and its commitment to sustainable development. 
the original BAPA was a groundbreaking uh, document at its time, but it's now crucial to adapt it to the new sustainability paradigm determined by the 2030 Agenda. The challenges of the revision of the BAPA are the same as the challenges that South-South and Triangular Cooperation faces today. And so, for the future, triangular cooperation should first and foremost be placed at a higher political level, more in line with its strategic role in shaping flexible and inclusive partnerships that go far beyond ODA. The international community should take the opportunity provided by this conference to reaffirm South-South and triangular cooperation as valuable assets to the achievement of the 2030 Agenda in its three dimensions, underlining its value added as an attractive instrument for the involvement of the private sector, philanthropy, civil society, civil society, regional organizations, and local actors in development. Triangular cooperation complements South-South cooperation by supporting adapted, innovative, and flexible solution to overcome today's environmental, economic, and social challenges, and by promoting sustainable development in Southern countries. It can also assist in delivering impactful development cooperation by creating strong horizontal partnerships for sustainable development results. Nevertheless, there is still a need to better understand triangular cooperation, to define its comparative advantages and to provide more evidence and rigorous information on its scale, scope and impact. Triangular arrangements should be used in a more strategic and political level as it promotes partnerships more valuable than the sum of the individual parts and during beyond the project spilling over to other areas of interest with lasting impact. We envisage a new framework for triangular cooperation based on the principles of aid effective effectiveness in the true spirit of shared responsibilities and in the context of a new and more horizontal multilateralism based on a new balance between countries and regions and between state and non-state actors. The growing role of South-South and triangular cooperation and its increased complexity should be matched with stronger institutional arrangements at the national, regional and global levels. The UN has a role to play in this regard, eventually through a voluntary reporting system of South-South and triangular cooperation to map interventions and learn from them. We believe that the different contributions to the drafting of the outcome document made it more balanced and more consensual. In this regard, the Lisbon meeting held less than a year ago was an important step in the way to this conference, highlighting the need to find joint political messages through inclusiveness on the positive role of these modalities uh, of cooperation. In that sense, the outcome document should express the ambition of all countries in assuming greater responsibility in the framework of the implementation of the 2030 Agenda, gradually more in line with the role of the Global South currently plays in, uh, in international affairs and Je remercie la vice-ministre. I thank the distinguished representative, uh, Secretary of State for Cooperation of Portugal, for her statement. And I would like uh, to remind speakers to kindly respect the speaking time of five minutes. I now give the floor to Mr. David Cooney, State Secretary, Special Envoy of the Government of Ireland, to the conference. Uh, Mr. President, Excellencies, I would like to thank, uh, begin by thanking our generous host, the Republic of Argentina, for the organization and co coordination of this important event. It is an honor to be here today in Buenos Aires to lend Ireland support to this global effort to strengthen South-South cooperation, 
triangular cooperation and effective and equal engagement between the Global South and the Global North. I too would like to take this opportunity to express condolences to the people of Mozambique, Malawi and Zimbabwe who have suffered as a result of the recent cyclone. My government has announced its readiness to assist these countries with whom we maintain close ties. Mr. President, 40 years on from the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, much has been done to progress this agenda and to facilitate the legitimate development aspirations of the Global South. However, there remains much more to be done. This conference is an important opportunity to reflect, but more importantly, to reinvigorate our efforts. Ireland had the honour to co-facilitate the negotiations on the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In 2015, alongside our co-facilitators, Kenya, we brought together all member states, civil society and the private sector to agree the sustainable development goals. South-South and triangular cooperation are addressed directly in the SDG 17 partnership for the goals. Ireland's ambition is to play a continued leadership role in transforming our world through the implementation of the SDGs. The countries in which Ireland operates value us as a trusted and long-term partner. Our aid is fully untied and we are committed to keeping it that way. We believe that this is how North-South cooperation should and must be undertaken in a spirit of true partnership. And we believe that lessons from our experience may assist in informing the further development of South-South cooperation. Ireland's latest policy for international development, A Better World, adopted last month, updates Ireland's traditional focus on the poorest of the poor to realise the pledge of the SDGs to reach the furthest behind first. It has been developed in the full knowledge of the volatile global context in which we all live and Ireland's firm belief that global problems can only be tackled through collective action. The evolving global context marked by conflict, the threat of climate change, extreme violence against women and girls and growing inequality requires transformative, integrated approaches. We recognise this and prioritise gender equality, reducing humanitarian need, climate action and governance as key strategies to address the needs of those furthest behind first. Through our new policy, Ireland will increase its support to small island developing states, which are particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. We will do this through various means, including our support for the LDCF and other climate finance instruments, contributions to UNFCCC, specifically LDC and gender support, climate justice partnerships and supporting inclusive innovation that stimulates more investment in long-lasting climate solutions. Ireland's international development programme has always been focused on the need to protect the most vulnerable in society. We know the reality of vulnerability. Ireland has experienced colonisation, conflict, famine, mass migration and severe economic difficulties. Our international development policies and all engagement at the bilateral, regional and multilateral levels is built upon this lived experience. Ireland is fully committed to the multilateral system. We have always engaged with the UN in a serious and substantive way. It informs how we act globally and shapes our international outlook and our belief in empathy, partnership and independence. Ireland is a candidate for the non-permanent membership of the Security Council for the term 2021 20, to 2022. As an elected member, we undertake to continue our practice of listening to the wider UN membership to advocate for those whose voices need to be heard at the Security Council. In this spirit, Ireland fully supports the valuable work of this conference. BAPA Plus 40 allows us the opportunity to reaffirm our responsibility to this agenda and our responsibility to each other. We have a phrase in our native language which translates as we live in each other's shelter, not in each other's shadow. This conference is an embodiment of that shelter, a coming together of the global community to reassert our shared responsibility to each other. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Je remercie. I want to thank uh, Secretary of State, uh, Special Envoy of the Government of Ireland for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of Israel. Thank you, Mr. President, Excellencies, colleagues. 
We are marking today 40 years since the Buenos Aires Plan of Action on South-South Cooperation was adopted here in this beautiful capital city of Argentina. In recent decades, we have seen significant shifts in the global development landscape. One of those changes has been the evolution of some developing countries into partners well positioned to share their homegrown experience and practical knowledge. These countries have successfully addressed their own development challenges and are eager to share their success with the world. The State of Israel is one such country. Since gaining its independence in 1948, Israel has transformed from a developing country to a high-tech advanced economy. From a developing economy to a donor country, <coughs> we achieved this through the development of human resources, supporting scientific research, and making use of a new and innovative technologies. We did this while taking full responsibility for our, developing, for our development challenges without expecting others to own or fund our development work and solutions in line with many of the principles of South-South and Triangular Cooperation. <coughs> Sorry. Over the past 60 years, the State of Israel through Mashav, Israel Agency for International Development Corpor Cooperation, has taken these solutions and made them available to other countries all across the globe. We have worked until today with more than 140 different countries in sharing ex experiences and know-how, including with our immediate neighbors, the Palestinians, the Jordanians, and the Egyptians, and we call upon all our Middle Eastern neighboring countries to intensify development cooperation in our region. Mr. President, we are living in an era that will ever be remembered in human history as the age of universal sustainable development, an age in which all nations put aside their differences and came together to adopt a comprehensive, achievable development agenda based on sustainable pillars. This in itself is a huge common achievement, but for this achievement to work and to truly transform reality on our planet, we have to make sure that the immense efforts invested in development are fully coordinated in a coherent manner. The constant spread of food, water, and nutrition insecurity are daunting challenges for the entire international community, especially in the wake of a fast-growing world population. By 2050, the world population is expected to possibly reach 10 billion inhabitants. Almost all growth will take place in the less developed regions. Five and a half billion people of underdeveloped countries are expected to increase to eight billion by 2050. By contrast, the population of the more developed regions will remain mostly unchanged at 1.2 billion. It is crystal clear that the main challenge of mankind in the next 30 years is to find smart solutions for increasing resilience and feeding and supplying fresh water to all of Earth's inhabitants. In order to address these challenges, there is a need to move towards the implementation of a fully integrated global approach based on the widest possible array of innovative and affordable solutions. This approach has to combine all components of development assistance, financial and technical alike. One will not be sufficient without the other. Only efforts that will include all actors and all tools combined will bear real fruit and will take the difference we all aspire for. If we fail to do so, our planet will face the, an immense humanitarian crisis with unprecedented magnitude. It is obvious that only resilient communities will be able to tackle the immense challenges in front of them. And this will be achieved only through intensified South-South cooperation as well as North-South cooperation and triangular partnerships. The State of Israel has been committed since the very early days of its establishment 70 years ago in fulfilling its responsibility contrib to contribute to ongoing uphill global fight against poverty and constant international efforts to achieve sustainable development. Under this commitment, we see ourselves as natural partners for any international effort such as this one discussed here today in Buenos Aires. Israel believes that programs which synthesize innovation, entrepreneurship, finance, financing, and planning 
from both the public and private sectors present an achievable method of implementing a supportive and sustainable environment for development. We are strong believers that a successful collaboration of governments, private sector and, so and civil society will allow an enabling environment for change. But for these efforts to succeed, a major paradigm shift is needed. All countries have to take full responsibility for their challenges, problems, and gaps. And for the sake of time, I would like to thank you all very much. I want to thank the representative of Israel, and I now give the floor to the representative of Djibouti. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, Secretary General of the United Nations, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, my capacity as ambassador, it's a great honor for me to be with you today in the second high-level conference on uh, high-level cooperation, on South-South cooperation, excuse me, to represent my country. and. Uh, his ex and represent His Excellency the Minister of Foreign Affairs who, of Djibouti, who unfortunately could not be here uh, due to his heavy schedule. I would like to write at the outset thank the government of Argentina and the Secretary General of the United Nations uh, for uh, the convening and organization of this second high-level conference. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting takes place place four decades after the Buenos Aires summit in 1978, and it's an opportunity for us to take stock of the progress achieved in the area of South-South cooperation, but also to continue their momentum towards uh, sustainable development uh, uh, in alignment with the 2030 Agenda of the United Nations and the 2063 Agenda of the African Union as well as our own development strategies. Indeed, my country has uh, developed a vision, Djibouti 2035, and a, an accelerated uh, growth strategy to promote job creation uh, as early as 2014 in line with its uh, five-year plan. These two instruments are all aligned on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Djibouti, similar to other countries, uh, has committed itself to strengthening South-South cooperation to promote its economic and social development. Uh, on this point, I could mention as an example major uh, transformation projects in such key sectors as access to energy, drinking water, and the modernization of, uh, of our transport systems together with Ethiopia, and this as part of a strategic partnership with China in order to encourage regional uh, and Africa-wide integration. Now, with this in mind, just recently, the Republic of Djibouti also initiated uh, large-scale strategic projects, uh, including the building of a gas pipeline and the creation of a customs-free zone to promote uh, foreign investment and thus uh, foster economic growth uh, to create a large number of jobs, the modernization of infrastructure and uh, stimulating economic growth, reducing poverty and social uh, and regional inequalities are the main goals that the country has pursued in implementing uh, our strategy. Uh, the government has continued to expand its diplomatic efforts in uh, seeking a more in active international cooperation to intensify and diversify economic, financial, and technical cooperation. Further, Djibouti also has encouraged integration and regional cooperation by participating actively in such bodies uh, as IGAD and others. Uh, and several cooperation agreements have been signed with a, a number of countries of the African continent. Ladies and gentlemen, this conference uh, today is very important to uh, revitalize uh, uh, South-South cooperation on the basis of a partnership which is as broad as possible in order to promote international solidarity. 
This conference will no doubt define directions and the trajectory to follow for the years to come to, in, to ensure greater effectiveness and efficiency of cooperation for development. As far as my country is concerned, the political will is there to strengthen South-South and triangular cooperation. And furthermore, this is clearly uh, indicated in a recent report on the, uh, on the status of South-South cooperation in Djibouti by the Djibouti by a number of uh, international organizations. In spite of the, uh, the absence of an official body in charge of South-South and triangular cooperation at the a uh, national level, a focal point in charge of uh, similar issues uh, exists in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and ensures uh, uh, monitoring of uh, these kinds of uh, uh, initiatives. We welcome the growing support of, uh, of developing countries for South-South cooperation because, as you know, South-South cooperation is complementary to North-South cooperation. At this point, it's important to raise additional financial resources to support the initiatives of countries in development, which have to deal with uh, various challenges to ensure their own sustainable development. Lastly, to conclude, I would like to hail the tireless efforts of the United Nations Office for South-South Cooperation, UNOSSC, which encourages the search for partnerships for uh, and partners to uh, achieve the goals of the 2030 Agenda, making this uh, initiative a factor for transformation uh, to achieve sustainable development. Thank you very much for your attention. I want to thank the representative of Djibouti, and I now give the floor to the representative of Tunisia. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, on behalf of the Republic of Tunisia, I would like to express our thanks and appreciation to the people and government of Argentina for hosting the second high-level United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation and for their hospitality. I would also like to state that my country attaches importance to participating in the work of this important international conference. We would also like to align ourselves with the statement delivered by pa Palestine on behalf of the G77 and China. Ladies and gentlemen, our meeting is held 40 years following the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action for promoting and implementing technical cooperation among developing countries that helped to lay the foundations for an economic and technical cooperation between the countries of the South. We gather here today to evaluate progress made in South-South cooperation and to look into ways to enhance and remove any obstacles before such a cooperation. Tunisia renews from this very rostrum its commitment to South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation as a means to implement the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its ambitious goals, notably poverty eradication, and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Tunisia was among the leading countries to put in place a public policy on South-South cooperation, and the Tunisian Agency for Technical Cooperation is implementing relevant programs and projects. My country has known many successful examples in South-South and triangular cooperation. Allow me to mention a few. When it comes to health, the Tunisian Agency for Technical Cooperation in 2003 has sent over 500 ophthalmologists and, technical and medical technicians to countries of Sub-Saharan Africa through different missions with the support of the Islamic Bank for Development and the WHO, and we are providing medical experience through the Sight Club, which is an NGO established by Tunisian physicians. We have also implemented cooperation projects with African countries when it comes to combating infant 
and maternal mortality, supported by the French Agency for Development, we have also implemented projects on reproductive health with the support of the Japanese Agency for International Cooperation. We have also implemented training sessions on combating HIV and eye diseases supported by the Islamic Bank for Development. We are also providing training sessions to a number of personnel from the countries of the South. We are working with several African and Arab countries and providing them with expertise, skills, and best practices in the fields of education, agriculture, water, environment, vocational training, export promotions, communications, empowerment of women, combating poverty, regional and decentralized development, enhancing SMEs, and quality management. In this regard, I would like to recall that these successful experiences and others enable Tunisia to receive the UN Award for South-South Cooperation in 2008. This success was a great example of the skills, competencies, and experience of Tunisia and how we are relying on our own national experiences. We value triangular cooperation as a tool to enhance cooperation initiatives between countries of the South by providing funding and building capacity and technology. Enhancing South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation requires the efforts of all countries, financial institutions, and international organizations. We reaffirm the main role of the United Nations in supporting and enhancing South-South and triangular cooperation. We would like to renew our call to all donors and financial institutions, whether multilateral, regional, or bilateral, to increase financial resources and technical cooperation to enhance South-South and triangular cooperation. In conclusion, we would like to wish this conference every success may, be, may it culminate in the adoption of an outcome document that we will all seek to implement to achieve development for all our people. I thank you for your attention. Je remercie le représentant to thank the representative of the Tunisian Republic, and I now give the floor to the representative of India. Mr. President and distinguished delegates, let me begin by expressing our gratitude to our host, Argentina, who, in keeping with the tradition of leadership, in promoting cooperation amongst the South, have been gracious with their hospitality and arrangements for this meeting. Mr. President, the cardinal principle of South-South cooperation that brought us together 40 years ago to adopt the Buenos Aires program of action and still binds us together is that sharing valuable practice capacities, experiences, and knowledge amongst developing countries can be a catalyst for development. It does not substitute or supplant, but only supplements North-South cooperation. Mr. President, as opportunities for sharing the fruits of knowledge and technology grow and growth have changed, we all are now seeking new channels of cooperation rather than conflict, new pathways for development rather than destruction. India, given our large, complex, and diverse setting, has vast experiences in nation-building experiments. Based on this, the core of our approach towards development cooperation since the early years of our independence has been willingness to share with others traversing similar paths. In recent years, India's development cooperation with fellow partners from the South has expanded. Geographically, distance is no longer a deterrent to sharing for common benefit. Formats of consolidating partnership have broadened. They include grant assistance, lines of credit, small development projects, technical consultancy, disaster relief, humanitarian assistance, educational scholarships, and a range of capacity building programs. Under the Indian Technical Economic Cooperation Program, 
about 13,000 training slots are provided annually to nominees from 161 countries. All LDCs are eligible for preferential market access in India under a duty-free tariff preference scheme. Over the last decade, India has extended lines of credit of about $25 billion to more than 60 countries of the South. All projects follow universally recognized norms. They do not create unsustainable debt burdens and ensure that skill and technology transfer to help communities and maintain and sustain assets are created. Projects not only cover traditional areas such as infrastructure, agriculture, education, health and rural development, but also new frontiers ranging from the blue economy to the digital economy. They encompass climate action activities such as through the International Solar Alliance and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief as is being undertaken even as we speak by Indian Navy personnel at Port Beira in Mozambique. The South Asian satellite is testimony that the sky is no longer the limit when it comes to India's efforts at South-South cooperation among the like-minded countries. Mr. President, the SDGs represent a confluence of core developmental priorities of the South and the normative agenda of the UN. The India-UN Development Partnership Fund, established in June 2017, is a new mechanism contributing to the achievement of SDGs of fellow developing countries. The UN Office of South-South Cooperation is the fund manager for this innovative startup mechanism. The fund already has projects in 39 countries. UN system entities have taken the lead in project implementation. We welcome partners from the South availing opportunities offered by this modality. Mr. President, more and better South-South cooperation now is on account of the Global South enjoying more rapid and sustained economic growth. Yet, South-South cooperation retains its distinct nature and values as well as diversity of forms and flows. It defies easy categorization. The trajectory of global growth and the declining share of ODA during the last decade or so has seen attempts to subsume South-South cooperation in the international aid architecture. Such efforts are not helpful. They do no justice to either its historical heritage or its future potential. Let us not venture to straightjacket South-South cooperation into a format that it cannot fit into. Mr. President, India remains committed to enhancing contributions to South-South solidarity in accordance with our means and on the basis of the principles and norms of South-South cooperation. I thank you. Je remercie le représentant. Mr. President, Excellencies and distinguished delegates, I take this opportunity to express my delegation's sincere thanks to the government of the Republic of Argentina for the excellent organization in hosting the second UN high-level conference on South-South cooperation. My delegation associates itself with a statement delivered by Palestine on behalf of G77 and China. I would like to recognize and congratulate <coughs> Lithuania and Uganda for successfully facilitating the intergovernmental negotiations with the view of producing the final draft outcome. Today's high-level conference marks the 40th anniversary of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action. On this occasion, we wish once again to demonstrate our solidarity of upholding our human dignity and to underscore the growing contribution of South-South cooperation toward the achievement of sustainable development goals. South-South cooperation is characterized by national ownership, which is a very important driver in the promotion of partnership and solidarity among the global South. South-South cooperation provides political space 
and offers very strategic approach to overcoming the overarching structural challenges of many developing countries. However, the many challenges that hamper the developments, such as intractable conflicts, climatic factors, natural disasters, as well as the additional constraints faced by the LDC, especially their limited productive capacity and poor infrastructure cannot be tackled by only South-South cooperation. Given the scope of Agenda 2030 and the importance of South-South cooperation in leveraging for wider partnership all available means of cooperation, triangular, north-south, and bilateral should be employed to effectively address the objectives of ending poverty and inequalities in all countries. In this regard, Eritrea views that leadership, enhancing synergy and efficiency, a stronger and focused partnership on key national priority areas as important tools toward this rapid transformation of the social, economic, and environmental situations of our respective countries. Eritrea, as a matter of priority, is working diligently to boost its productive capacity by focusing first and foremost on its human capital as an engine for growth. Mr. President, the promotion of peace and stability is indispensable in unlocking the full potential of conflict-affected countries and in freeing up urgently needed resources for development. The recent positive and rapid development in the Horn of Africa have renewed the spirit of regional cooperation putting behind two decades of conflict and mistrust. The council region have stepped up their cooperation by working very closely to make up for the lost opportunity. The region is developing in a manner that aims to meet the priorities and aspirations of its people. The zone of peace and stability is already attracting attention for trade, investment, infrastructure, rehabilitation and development as well as connectivity of transportation and communication systems. The region is changing and it is very promising. These are all welcome developments in strengthening South-South cooperation toward the attainment of a better and sustainable future. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Eritrea and now give the floor to the representative of Holy See. Mr. President, sir, greetings and blessings from the Holy Father, Pope Francis, who have interest in these meetings. They say life starts at 40. And after uh, these 40 years, we are gathering together to see the future of this cooperation South-South. And in the name of my delegation and the name of the Holy Father, I express also our gratitude to His Excellency, Mr. Mauricio Macri, President of Argentina, for graciously convening and uh, hosting this conference. Mr. President, sir, since the adoption of Buenos Aires Plan of Action during the Conference of Technical Cooperation among Developing Countries held in this very city more than 40 years ago, the Holy See has followed attentively the matter of mutual assistance among nations, urging global solidarity with regard to development strategies, especially as they affect the developing nations of the world, with a special concern to provide accurate and objective ass assessment of what it means by the term of development. Mutual assistance 
is at the core of South-South cooperation, and thus it cannot be conditional and cannot be limited to facilitating the exchange of goods and service. Rather, it must also seek to reduce existing inequalities among nations and to foster their development. The Holy See believes that authentic development must be integral, that is directly the true good of every person and of all the persons. True development can't consist simply in the accumulation of wealth and greater availability of goods and service, but must be pursued with adequate consideration of the social, cultural, and spiritual dimensions of the human being. For development to be integral, men and women must be active agents, protagonists of their own advancement, to treat them as mere objects in some scheme our plan would be to stifle their capacity of freedom and their responsibility, which is fundamental to a human being. The Holy Father contributed immensely to our problems. One of the problems we are touching during this conference with Laudato Si, how to look after our environment, our habitat, for a better world we will leave behind. The Holy Father also in these days is talking about three T. The first T, te, like tierra. The second T, like techo. The third T, like uh, trabajo. Questo è la cosa más Because these are the most important things. If there is no work, if there are no roofs, if there is no land, we cannot speak of human dignity. Pope Francis gives voice to these three important dimensions for humanity today. Thank you very much to all of the presidents. I am a son of the African continent. I cannot imagine what is happening in Mozambique, in Ghana, in Malawi today. Thousands of lives lost and a pressing need for food and water. God bless us all. I thank Representative of Holy See. Now I give the floor to Mr. Mosin Jesuli, Minister Delegate to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in charge of African Cooperation of Morocco. The floor is yours. Madame la Présidente. Madam President, Excellencies, ladies, gentlemen, I would like to begin by thanking the President of the Republic of Argentina, the Secretary General of the United Nations, and the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations for all the efforts made to ensure the success of this conference in this beautiful city of Buenos Aires. Ladies and gentlemen, 40 years after the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, we are here again to learn from our respective experiences, first of all, but also to identify innovative mechanisms which will make it possible to increase the role of South-South cooperation. Since uh, 1978, uh, when the first conference was held, spectacular progress has been made in many areas of South-South cooperation. This progress is a source of great satisfaction for all of us, but we can and we must do better. Almost 6 million people, uh, 600 million people, are still living in extreme poverty in the world. 
This is the scope of the task before us. This finding itself should encourage us to put our practices, resources, and knowledge together in a spirit of active uh, solidarity and balance. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, South-South Cooperation can positively contribute to the realization of the 2030 Agenda of the United Nations for Sustainable Development. The 17 SDGs are catalysts for actions by different stakeholders in development on the national, regional, and international levels. My country, the Kingdom of Morocco, is convinced that these objectives will contribute if they are realized in a fair, balanced, and integrated fashion to, raise these, uh, to respond to these challenges and generate profound change. This is the conviction driving the action of the Kingdom of Morocco forward in the area of South-South cooperation. Aware of the importance and the challenges uh, we face, the Kingdom has made cooperation a strategic pillar of its foreign policy and enshrined it in the 2011 Constitution as a constant in its diplomacy. Morocco's commitment to South-South cooperation is guided by a clear-sighted royal vision, putting the humans at the core of all the actions and initiatives with the objective of setting the stage for integration, which encourage investments, exchanges, and co-development. It has, this has allowed Morocco to establish an ecosystem of committed national actors associating the public sector, private sector, and civil society. South-South cooperation and the 2030 Agenda have a common goal, that of putting countries of the South on a virtuous path of economic development and progress for the good of their populations. In Africa, we launched several continental initiatives. One of the challenges needing more cooperation in Africa is climate change with disastrous effects such as desertification, drought, degradation of biodiversity, and pollution. This uh, risks uh, inflaming populations which might be tempted to turn to extremism and terrorism and provoke uh, political instability. Thus, on the margins of COP22 organized in 2016 in Morocco, His Majesty King Mohammed VI chaired the African Summit for Action, during which three commissions were set up, the Congo Basin Commission, the Sahel Region Commission, and the Island State Commission. We also launched another pioneering initiative, the AAA initi initiative for the adaptation of African agriculture to reduce the vulnerability of agriculture faced with climate change and reorient financing towards adaptation. When it comes to migration, which was uh, at the center of the 2030 agenda, and a major problem for, for Africa, the Kingdom of Morocco will host the African Observatory for Migration to reinforce cooperation between African countries and better manage the migration phenomenon. For commerce and investment, the Kingdom is now the second African investor on the continent, the first African investor in West Africa, cre creating opportunities for jobs for thousands of people, sharing its experience and know-how in areas such as water management, electrification, agriculture, or renewable energy. South-South cooperation is an essential pillar of international cooperation for development. This dynamic has a measurable effect on the ground, especially for the most vulnerable populations. South-South cooperation must be reinforced by North-South cooperation as well through triangular cooperation, which is uh, an indispensable mechanism at present. We reiterate our availability to cooperate with the various institutions of the United Nations and all stakeholders to promote partnerships and initiatives to strengthen South-South cooperation and triangular cooperation. To conclude, we must be aware that reaching the Millennium, De uh, or rather the Sustainable Development Goals, calls for uh, re re uh, so responses in solidarity and firm commitment. Thank you very much. I thank the Minister Delegate to the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation in charge of African Cooperation of Morocco for his statement. And now I give a floor to the representative of Panama.
Sus Excelencias, señor Presidente. Excelencias, Madam President. Uh, first, I would like uh, to thank and uh, congratulate on behalf of the Government of the Republic of Canada, the organizers and hosts uh, for the holding of the second high-level conference of the United Nations on South-South cooperation. An opportunity to reiterate the importance of the principles of South-South cooperation and uh, assess uh, the achievements and lessons learned, as well as considering new forms of responding to the challenges before us. Panama takes its double role of a provider and receiver of cooperation. In recent years, Panama has seen significant progress in our na uh, on the national level. We have uh, drawn up the National Cooperation Plan uh, for 2030, orienting all cooperation in the country, conducting structural changes in the administration of the state, making these functions possible, and, opti and, opti and harmonizing internal policy and international cooperation. Like many countries here, we have uh, made lists of our capacities in order to offer our best practices to other countries, neighboring countries and uh, kindred countries, especially in the framework of South-South cooperation. A lot remains to be done in order to take decided steps forward towards the goals of the SDGs. However, South-South cooperation continues to be the mechanism offering effective, uh, efficient alternatives in the medium and long term. We believe that SSC and triangular cooperation are destined to be mechanisms making it possible to achieve better economic well-being and better quality of life for our peoples. However, the major question is, how are we going to do this? How to share our best practices and lessons learned in a more effective way with greater impact? How can we make rapid progress without leaving anybody behind? How can we create those strategic alliances that meet that commitment? We believe that this is a space to discuss these issues. Uh, for this reason, uh, Panama is oriented towards a new way of understanding international cooperation setting up networks of uh, communication for cooperation with the understanding that knowledge is adaptable. It can be transferred, but not packaged. Knowledge is not something set that can be cut and pasted. All countries have knowledge, and uh, we all share that knowledge for development through cooperation. However, the true challenge is how to connect uh, this know-how with the needs, with the resources, with the will, with decision makers, and uh, with those who draw up public policy. For these reasons, the true challenge lies in uh, bringing together networks, building trust, and identifying the knowledge uh, nexuses, their protagonists, and then connect uh, the information and best practices networks to a network of knowledge uh, which is constant and permanent. In Panama, we have developed this way of working in networks, taking our competitive advantages of connectivity and great connections uh, and making the most of it. We have created two hubs the humanitarian hub, a logistical center for uh, humanitarian assistance to provide immediate responses in cases of disasters and other emergencies. And we've also created the cooperation hub with two fundamental spaces, uh, the networking space for all development stakeholders, the, gov uh, the central government, local governments, private sector, academia, civil society, international organizations. Here we determine actions, roadmaps, and uh, draw up uh, joint work plans. Another space is a knowledge space as a living, changing thing which should be understood as such. We must be able to break paradigms. And I think this is the best place to change again as we did 40 years ago, the way in which we understand international cooperation, creating networks of knowledge, making it possible for us to make progress sustainably and to transition towards uh, that kind of development. 
in Panama, we believe we cannot work in isolation. All of us must work together. We are all actors in development. That is why we must all be involved in decision making together, because leaving no one behind also means involving more actors in the solutions, proposals, and in achieving sustainable development, above all, in achieving robust interconnected alliances. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Panama. Now I'll give the floor to the representative of Jamaica. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, I join colleague in congratulating the United Nations for convening the second high-level conference on South-South cooperation and expressing thanks to the government of the Argentine Republic for hosting such an important event and for the warm hospitality extended to us. Jamaica aligns itself with a statement delivered by Palestine on behalf of the G77 and China. It is opportune that we are again gathered in Buenos Aires 40 years after the adoption of the Plan of Action, which provided the framework for promoting and implementing technical cooperation among developing countries. We now have the opportunity to take stock of the progress made and address the challenges which continue to hinder the full implementation of the DAPA. Jamaica recognizes South South cooperation as an important complement to its engagement with development partners. We therefore support bilateral and multilateral efforts aimed at increasing economic and technical cooperation among the countries of the South, and in particular, those that target the implement implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This kind of partnership supports self-reliance through innovation and technology. We note further that as the scale and scope of South-South cooperation expands significantly with the increased engagement of the South, the dependency of our countries on North-South partnerships decreases. Jamaica also sees economic cooperation between developing economies playing an important role in maintaining the necessary multilateral relations between member states of the South. My delegation recalls the fruitful and credible bilateral and multilateral partnerships which we have forged over the years through South-South cooperation. Partnerships enjoy through knowledge sharing and capacity building on various issues included in the areas of climate change, healthcare, energy and disaster risk reduction and management. These partnerships have also improved knowledge and expertise across our countries, have assisted in the achievement of a number of national priorities. From our experience, we recognize that South South cooperation has withstood the test of time, and the solidarity engendered has not only endured, but has resulted in stronger and deeper economic bonds among our countries. We welcome, therefore, the convening of this conference and view our participation as an opportunity to explore areas of mutual interest to build stronger relations among our countries. While Jamaica has made commendable strides in the country's implementation of the SDGs, we are still faced with significant challenges. Among those we confront are our economic, environmental, and social vulnerabilities. We are frequently adversely impacted by extreme weather events which severely retard our development prospects. We are also constrained by the country's upper middle income classification. This has made it increasingly difficult to secure aid and concessional financing for development projects, as it ignores the disparities and structural inefficiencies of countries such as Jamaica. Climate change, we all know, affects all states, and there is no denying the destabilizing and devastating impact it has on vulnerable countries such as Jamaica. Over the past 25 years, we have experienced an increase in frequency and severity of natural events, including floodings, tropical storms, and hurricanes. These have significantly impacted on the economy and the lives of our people. Concessional financing is therefore critical to building resilience. Although the Addis Ababa Action Agenda provides a framework for financing Agenda 2030, we grapple with identifying practical ways to mobilize resources to drive our ambitious sustainable development agenda. Strategic resource mobilization is therefore required towards the identification of new, non-traditional and innovating financing modalities. We remain concerned about the inadequate access to high-quality data, 
which is a critical requirement for making Agenda 2030 a reality. We cannot overstate, therefore, the importance of capacity building to support the strengthening of data systems and producing high-quality, disaggregated data. The opportunity to discuss these challenges in fora such as this conference represents an occasion to define collective action to ensure that none of our countries are left behind. We believe that our shared commitment can transcend boundaries and create avenues for lasting partnerships that would support our common development aspiration. We concede that we still have a long way to go in realizing these ambitions. We therefore continue to call for partnerships at the global and sub-regional levels to mitigate and adapt to the economic, social, environmental, and other influences which have disproportionately high impact, degree of impact on countries of the South. This conference offers us a chance to think in terms of the kinds of initiative we must pursue among all countries across the miles and regions based on the sharing of experiences and in the spirit of South-South cooperation. In that regard, I look forward to our continued deliberations. Thank you. I thank the representative of Jamaica. I now give the floor to the representative of Japan. Mr. President, first of all, Japan would like to thank the government of Argentina for hosting today's conference. We would like, also like to convey the appreciation to the, His Excellency Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations for organizing BAPA Press 40. Since the United Nations high-level conference on South-South cooperation held in Nairobi 2009, South-South and Triangular cooperation have largely expanded and developed. South-South and Triangular cooperation are important tools for achieving the SDGs in terms of promoting inclusive, exclusive development. Furthermore, the environment surrounding development of cooperation in change is changing significantly with the economic growth of emerging countries, and we cannot limit ourselves to the flame of the traditional donor-recipient relationship and must promote continuous policy dialogue and peer learning among all actors. We need to implement traditional ODA alongside side-side and the tri triangular cooperation in a multilateral and complementary manner, leading towards achievement of SDGs. Mr. President, Japan has supported the self-help efforts to numerous developing countries with an aspiration for their, their self-sustainable self development. As confirmed in Japan's Development Cooperation Charter, Japan attaches special emphasis on the developing countries on initiative, self-help efforts, and self-sustainable growth in 1975. Japan began third country training as its very first program of triangular cooperation through triangular cooperation. We are committed to continue sharing Japan's experience and knowledge and to ex extend dialogue and cooperation among developing and emerging countries while advocating mutual learning and efforts toward self-sustaining development. In South Side and Triangular Cooperation, various actors participate, including private sectors. And in addition to sharing knowledge within the region, knowledge sharing actions continues its enabled. South South and Triangular Cooperation offer platforms for uh, multi-stakeholders to work together to achieve the SDGs. Knowledge sharing and learning are the basis to improve South-South and triangular cooperation efforts. In order to enhance development outcomes for achieving the SDGs, we should all learn from these experiences and make such cooperation even more effective. Over the past 10 years, Japan has supported the organization of the South-South Cooperation Expo by the United Nations South-South Cooperation Office, a forum for knowledge sharing in January of this year. We hosted a side event at the G20 Development Working Group with the aim of encouraging mutual learning among the G20. As confirmed at that side event, it is important to gain the lessons learned and to understand the key roles that various actors 
can play based on practical example as well as to advance structural analysis through such in inductive methods as a typical uh, approach. Also, it is notable that monitoring evaluation and reporting in South-South and Triangular Cooperation provide a solid basis for strengthening mutual learning while holding the principles of transparency and accountability. In order to achieve the 2030 agenda, collaboration with various actors is essential to improve the effectiveness of development cooperation. This year, Japan takes the G20 presidency and we also held host TICAT 7 in August. Through these opportunities, Japan opts to further share and experience in developing cooperation and will work to expand international partnerships in a more effective and efficient manner. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Japan. I now give the floor to the representative of Burundi. Madam La President. Madam President, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to uh, start uh, by thanking uh, God All Powerful who has uh, kept us alive and uh, ask him to remain at our side throughout this historical uh, uh, meeting to promote South-South cooperation. Allow me to present the greetings of the Burundi's people and His Excellency Pierre Nkurunziza, the President, uh, who uh, would like to express the wish uh, for a, a very successful conference. I would also like to express on behalf of the Burundi's delegation and uh, in my own capacity my own gratitude to the people and government of uh, Argentina for the warm welcome and hospitality that they have uh, offered us since our arrival in this beautiful city. Madam President, 40 years after the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, which was a, a milestone for economic and technical cooperation among developing countries, we have gathered once again to examine the trends, assess the progress achieved, the lessons learned, and uh, uh, understand the challenges in order to improve the current institutional arrangements to support, promote, and strengthen South-South cooperation in order to achieve the ambitious goal of eradicating poverty in all its forms and its all, in all its dimensions. Now, in many places, uh, the increase of uh, economic inequalities within countries and among countries uh, has increased uh, the gap between rich and poor countries and uh, has uh, worsened the situation of the most vulnerable. Now, uh, South-South cooperation offers opportunities to uh, uh, take on the challenges that uh, stand before us uh, and uh, uh, to uh, implement the program of sustain the agenda uh, 2030 agenda of sustainable development where the goal is to leave no one behind and Burundi is convinced that the principles that have guided us uh, since the creation of South South cooperation remain relevant my country would like to reaffirm its firm conviction that the role the, the, the important role that South South cooperation has played over the past few years in seeking to eradicate poverty in all its forms I would like to however underscore that this form of cooperation cannot uh, be a substitute for North-South cooperation. And at this point, allow me, Madam President, to recall here that South-South cooperation must remain a manifestation of solidarity among the countries and nations of the South that, that to contribute to their well-being, the national uh, autonomy, and the achievement of the goals of development agreed at the international level, in particular uh, the 2030 Sustainable Agenda as well as the 2063 Agenda of the African Union. South-South cooperation and the program of action related to it must continue to be uh, defined and guided by countries of the South and should uh, continue to be guided by the principles of national sovereignty, national ownership, political independence, equality, uh, 
the absence of any uh, conditionality or unilateral sanctions, mutual interest, non-interference in the internal affairs of other states, uh, all pursuant to the United Nations Charter. Burundi is convinced that uh, industrialization is a key element uh, for the development of countries that are uh, lagging behind. We uh, ask for technical assistance and uh, capacity building uh, uh, for developing countries. Burundi would also like to recall the importance of triangular cooperation and acknowledge that this type of cooperation seeks to facilitate and strengthen uh, the initiatives of countries of the South, of course, while respecting their sovereignty. Madam President, uh, uh, I would also like to inform this august assembly that Burundi has adopted a national development plan for the period 2018-2027. This national plan, which uh, is inspired by uh, the vision of Burundi 2025 and the 2063 agenda of the African Union, is a reference document which uh, uh, sets out the main orientations uh, that will guide us towards sustainable development by 2030. Given the challenges presented in this new development plan, the government of Burundi would like to launch an appeal to all bilateral and multilateral partners to support our country in implementing this plan in a spirit of mutually beneficial and respectful cooperation. I'd like to take this opportunity to inform this uh, August Assembly that uh, Peace and security uh, prevail in Burundi. The people are preparing for elections in 2020, and I would like to confirm these elections will be demo democratic, free, peaceful, and transparent. Uh, the population will ensure the financing of these elections. I would also like to reiterate that Burundi will spare no effort to promote South-South cooperation uh, and we have continued to offer our contribution to this in terms of peace and security, which are the pillars of development. Madam President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, I would like to express the hope that the document that will be adopted at the end of this conference clearly responds to the needs and aspirations of developing countries uh, uh, that those aspirations have to do with sustainable development. Uh, uh, Thank you very much, and may God bless you. I thank the representative of Burundi. Now I give the floor to the representative of El Salvador. Bueno, honorable presidente. Honorable President, uh, representatives of various delegations, I would like to uh, start by echoing the statement made by the State of Palestine on behalf of seven, Group of 77 in China and by Costa Rica on behalf of medium income countries. Uh, for El Salvador, this conference is particularly important because uh, we have witnessed since 1978 sub substantial changes in the dominant paradigm of development as well as in the uh, architecture of global governance of international cooperation. The, fun the fundamental precepts of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action continue to be uh, relevant. This is why, as a country, we applaud the efforts of the United Nations system and of the Brethren people and government of, of Argentina in hosting this important uh, conference which will strengthen and deepen the political and technical concepts that currently characterize the so-called South-South cooperation. Now, in El Salvador, we underscore the importance that uh, regional integration has acquired in Latin America and the Caribbean. It uh, underscores the new orientation of developing countries regarding uh, um, their participation in international cooperation, which has become more interdependent, globalized, and multipolar. South-South dialogue has never been as important as today. We acknowledge the uh, valuable uh, contribution of South-South cooperation as a complementary mode of cooperation, not a substitute for North-South cooperation. Uh, and their important role in, in the implementing, uh, implementing the 2030 Agenda and achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Concrete steps have been taken, such as uh, in uh, uh, the community of Latin America and uh, Caribbean states, CELAC, uh, and the uh, and Ibero-American uh, Platform for Cooperation, uh, uh, 
Economic uh, Commission for Latin America and Caribbean, uh, CEPAL, and uh, the Central American System of Integration, SICA. In this last uh, integration platform, as a member of SICA, in the framework of the second co high-level conference, um, the United Nations for South-South Cooperation, uh, our, our position was very well presented by the Honorable Delegation of the Republic of Guatemala, who actually fills the pro tempore presidency of SICA. Our foreign policy, uh, very much open to the world, has made it possible for our country to have bi good bilateral cooperation with most countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as other brethren countries of the South guided by the principles uh, such as sovereignty, independence, equality, non-conditionality, non-interference in internal affairs, and of course, mutual benefits. This is why we'd like to underscore the contribution of the South, South of Latin American cooperation model to strengthening uh, South South and triangular cooperation at the regional and global level. This is an example. This has been exemplary due to its development, horizontality, and dynamism in implementing the recommendations of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action and the final document of the. Uh, um, of uh, the United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation that took place in Nairobi in 2009. In the past 10 years, El Salvador has uh, put a, uh, a top technical and uh, political priority on uh, uh, strengthening its institutions to uh, uh, manage South-South and triangular cooperation and uh, uh, to move from being simply a beneficiary of a co a cooperation to being a source of cooperation. Madam President, we look, we, um, look forward to the adoption of the final document uh, from this conference, uh, and we hope that this will serve to make more dynamic our national, regional, and global paradigms, both South-South cooperation, triangular, and regional cooperation. At the national level, we believe that this is an opportunity is truly historic. In the recent country, in the recent history of countries of the South, it uh, will give us a roadmap that should help us structure our cooperation in a more horizontal, equitable, and reciprocal way. BAPA plus 40 should be a point of no return to uh, reach agreement on all levels uh, on this type of cooperation, which will be essential in uh, implementing the 2030 uh, agenda, even beyond 2030. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of El Salvador. Now I give the floor to the representative of Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and God's blessings be upon you. At the outset, I would like to express our appreciation and gratitude to the, the, to the Republic of Argentina. On, uh, people and government uh, for, and we thank them for the warm welcome and the great efforts that they've exerted in preparing for uh, this uh, conference uh, and hosting it. This uh, second high-level conference of the United Nations uh, on South-South cooperation. This will undoubtedly participate uh, in enriching uh, our uh, discussions uh, and in setting uh, the appropriate conditions uh, in our quest uh, to arrive uh, at innovative solutions to confront uh, the common challenges in order to implement uh, the sustainable development agenda, which uh, we have committed ourselves to implementing by 2013. Moreover, we express uh, our country's support uh, to the delegation uh, delivered by the uh, State of Palestine on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. Today, we meet 40 years after the adoption of uh, the Buenos Aires uh, Plan of Action, which was adopted by the United Nations uh, Technical Cooperation Conference uh, that was held uh, in this very capital, Buenos Aires, in 1978. This plan of action was the very first brick in the groundwork to create South-South cooperation and to create a technical cooperation mechanism between the countries of the South in order to enable our countries to confront the challenges in an in a more effective manner and to achieve a balance between all the different aspects of sustainable development, be it socioeconomic or environmental. This platform of action was also reaffirmed by the 1977 Kuwaiti Declaration, through which development, developing states acknowledge the importance of South-South cooperation. Moreover, we view with optimism the 
uh, outcome document that we will adopt at the end of this conference uh, that would help support uh, our achievements over the past 40 years uh, in a manner that would keep up uh, with the changes uh, that uh, and challenges uh, that uh, the, the development and network uh, and system uh, is facing. We hope uh, that uh, the capabilities of the South uh, will be bolstered uh, through all forms of cooperation. We hope uh, that uh, our efforts uh, will be intensified to achieve sustainable development, which uh, we share with, with responsibility we share with our developed uh, nations. Moreover, South-South cooperation is complementary to North-South cooperation and triangular cooperation and not a substitute for it. Therefore, it is important for us uh, to intensify efforts uh, to do more and uh, to mobilize more support in order to uh, secure these resources. And the same applies to ODA, which is much lower than the agreed upon rates of 0.07%. Therefore, it is important uh, for developed states uh, to, uh, to play a leading role in offering uh, financial support uh, and technical support as well as knowledge sharing, uh, taking into account uh, the new innovations and scientific advancements and technological ones that have been achieved in order to fill any gaps and to uh, combat any kind of obstacles that uh, developing countries face. Here, we'd like to express our appreciation for the developed states that have achieved this rate of ODA. We stress that Kuwait has an, an, will always be one of the biggest supporters of uh, the joint development uh, of the countries of the world in order to eliminate uh, poverty and to alleviate uh, the debt burden and to help mitigate climate change and to alleviate the suffering of countries that are going and peoples going through conflict in order to meet uh, the needs of states going through conflict, especially LDCs uh, as well as SIDS and LLDCs in their efforts to achieve sustainable development. Madam Chair. Despite the fact that Kuwait is considered a high-income developing state, however, since its independence in 1961, it has given great attention to offering financial and in-kind support to developing states uh, through many mechanisms and uh, initiatives to help uh, sisterly states uh, and friendly states through different initiatives, including uh, the Kuwaiti Fund for Arab Economic Development within the context of our cooperation between uh, the countries of the South uh, and in our effort uh, to work collectively in order to meet uh, the developmental needs, be they on a multilateral level or a bilateral one. Our cooperation so far has ha, has been achieved with 106 developing countries. Moreover, this Kuwaiti fund is the first development uh, um, fund that offers development assistance in the developing world. Moreover, my country, Kuwait, and over the past few years, continues to offer development assistance that reached double almost the agreed upon rate, which is 0.07%. Moreover, we have hosted several high-level conferences, economic and developmental and humanitarian ones, in order to search for means to overcome the emerging challenges and the in an effective global partnership because we believe that we have a responsibility here and it occupies a high priority in, for, in Kuwait foreign policy. We're also ready to confront any emergencies as a result of epidemics or humanitarian and natural disasters in order to guarantee a more sustainable and equitable future for humanity throughout the world in accordance with the principle of a common and shared responsibility while um, sorry and in closing I would like to commend the efforts of Argentina and leadership and its people and the microphone is off I thank the representative of Kuwait and now I give the floor to the representative of Algeria Madam President, ladies, gentlemen, this conference uh, takes place in a context which clearly has uh, little in common with uh, the one 40 years ago uh, during the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action in the same beautiful city. What the world has seen there is many changes, uh, many developments, even if uh, the background remains the same. 
the countries of the South continue to suffer uh, uh, underdevelopment in its different forms and manifestations. And many of our countries have been able to uh, take advantage of the benefits of development. So in this context, marked by many challenges such as those posed by climate change and migration, which have been added to the classic challenges, uh, we also see major opportunities. It is up to all of us here in Buenos Aires to have an exhaustive list, uh, uh, take a a scope uh, the developments uh, in uh, the world economy uh, and um, solidify the ground uh, gained uh, in order to have uh, institutional tools on which South-South cooperation will be based, uh, in particular with a better coordination of our strategies and our national and regional policies. Madam President, from Bandung to Algiers, from Buenos Aires to Nairobi, cooperation between developing countries has been affirmed in the realization of some progress in the area of economic and social development and the consolidation of economic independence. The recent crises that show, shook the world economy showed once again the relevance of strengthening South-South cooperation and the need to reduce dependence on uh, financing from the North, which is increasingly burdensome. Algeria's focus on South-South cooperation is based on its conviction that developing the South is our own responsibility and can only take place with uh, the essential conditions of uh, equity, social progress, respect for sovereignty and equality being respected. We also believe that cooperation can, to a certain degree, correct uh, the distortions and gaps in the international economic system in the areas of finance, trade, investment, and technology. Algeria quickly integrated South-South cooperation in its development strategy in order to have it contribute to realizing national, regional, and international development goals with the region and the continent as our priorities. Algeria continues to provide uh, assistance to poorer countries through humanitarian assistance uh, to the efforts that those countries themselves are making against poverty, food insecurity, and, um, and national disasters. And I wish to express Algeria's solidarity with uh, Mozambique, which was struck uh, by an, uh, an extremely violent national disaster. Uh, uh, Algeria is a member of the African and Arab uh, free trade zones and especially works in the framework of Net NEPAD to set up a, a new trade network, making uh, uh, Algeria a principal focus uh, of its own uh, economic and trade uh, uh, policy. With the conviction that our own development cannot take place uh, without uh, uh, the ripple effect uh, in uh, neighboring countries, Algeria gives particular attention to the countries with which it shares uh, borders, as well as landlocked developing countries. In this spirit, uh, we c completed uh, the building of the Trans-Sahara Highway as far as the border of uh, Niger. We also have an international project signed in 2009 between Algeria, Niger, and Nigeria to build a gas pipeline, uh, which uh, is uh, over 4,000 kilometers long, as well as uh, laying down fiber optic uh, cables, which will help overcome the digital divide in this uh, region. We also canceled a debt of 16 uh, developing countries to, for a total of $1.4 billion. 
Madam President, uh, we must give a specific content uh, to the world partnership uh, we have brought together at the very highest level today. Thank you very much. I thank the representatives of Algeria. Now I give the floor to the representative of the Russian Federation. Uh, Distinguished Mr. President, I hope you didn't uh, turn on the timer while I was walking. Uh, we all need to take lessons in reading, uh, speed reading. Uh, Distinguished uh, President, uh, uh, the Russian Federation would like to express its gratitude to the government of Argentina for organizing this meeting today. Countries from the emerging markets and developing countries are drivers of global uh, development, and South-South cooperation allows them to play an important role in uh, international policy. Coordination of policy and strategies of the countries of the South uh, in the area of development uh, is very important. Uh, in at the national, regional, and global level. What's important is to, th thanks to South-South cooperation, uh, conditions of life of millions of people have significantly improved. Countries have uh, uh, made progress in overcoming technological and socioeconomic inequality. Now, uh, it's important to, to offer uh, countries of the South uh, support in taking advantage of South-South cooperation, particularly important in the context of uh, eradicating uh, poverty. Now, we support uh, the efforts of uh, UN funds and specialized agencies in developing thematic focused uh, uh, agendas. Uh, Russia acknowledges the importance of trilateral cooperation. We support traditional principles of South South cooperation, which were first enshrined here 40 years ago in Buenos Aires. Uh, respect for national sovereignty, non-interference in internal affairs, and uh, uh, refraining from conditionality. Now, first and foremost, we are interested in uh, fostering uh, South-South cooperation in the Asia, Eurasian region, uh, and uh, such uh, organizations as ASEAN and SCO play an important role. I'll give a few examples. The creation of a new development bank uh, with a $100 billion uh, Capital. This is the first uh, uh, bank created in the Eurasian uh, uh, region. Uh, Russia is one of the main uh, founders of the Eurasian Bank of Infrastructure Investments. Uh, now, it, uh, now uh, there's an initiative of President Putin to harmonize the European Eurasian economic uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, Cooperation in the framework of the Russia ASEAN Fund has been developing quickly. In the Central Asian region and the CIS, Russia has been providing technical support to Armenia and Uzbekistan in improving the system of governing state finances. Also, there are programs to enhance the financial literacy of the population in the CIS. And this was based on the experience uh, of a similar project that was implemented in Russia, and that was praised by the OECD and the World Bank. At the same time, Russia is interested in uh, cooperating in other regions of the world, and of course with Latin America. Since 2014, the Russian-Cuban Center for Trailing, uh, Training uh, Firefighters uh, has been uh, operating. I'd like to draw your attention to our work in Africa as well. In the framework of global efforts to combat the Ebola virus in 2017, the Rusal company opened uh, the Russia-Guinea uh, uh, Research Center on Epidemiology. It has been used uh, by uh, doctors from various countries of the world and is a, a successful example of South-South cooperation. Our country has also uh, implemented a project with WHO to cover the cost of, uh, of the work of Cuban doctors in dealing with the Ebola um, uh, epidemic. We've also been involved in uh, trilateral or uh, triangular cooperation, including uh, a project in the framework of the UNDP. 
Now, uh, there are projects that uh, involve uh, Armenia, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. Since 2010, together with the World Food Program, Russia has been implementing programs to build national capacity to improve the quality and effectiveness of uh, school uh, lunches in Armenia, and Kyrgyzstan, and, Ch and Tajikistan. Russia supports the initiative of the World Bank uh, on South-South cooperation. Russia is ready to continue increasing cooperation with other countries, uh, both in the framework of South-South and triangular cooperation uh, in uh, contributing to achieving the 2030 Agenda and the SDGs. It's also important to, to consider expanding the notion of South-South cooperation by involving multilateral financial organizations and the private sectors. Uh, Ms. Madam President, uh, you can uh, see the full text of the Russian statement on the website of the conference. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Russian Federation. Now I'll give the floor to the representative of Antigua and Barbuda. President, heads of states and governments, ministers of governments, other officials, the government of Antigua and Barbuda sends heartfelt appreciation to the government of Argentina in hosting BAPA Plus 40 and for the warm hospitality. Mr. President, we are at a celebratory moment for countries from the South, the 40th anniversary of the first meeting in South-South cooperation. As much as we celebrate, there is also much work to be done. Excellencies, with the integration of global economies and the rise of global players from the South and emerging economies, the global development cooperation landscape is changing rapidly. The epoch of one-way cooperation from the North is obsolete. Emerging economies and other developing countries have become key actors in this new development architecture that is called South-South cooperation. We, the countries of the South, play an important role in our own development, and we do so grounded on our shared desires in overcoming unique but similar development challenges, combating poverty, promoting inclusive societies, creating employment opportunities for our citizens, environmental protection, and our sustainable development. The government of Antigua and Barbuda holds firmly to the principles of South-South cooperation that are based on solidarity for each other, non-conditionality, mutual benefit, and non-interference in our development planning of equal importance to the principles of South-South cooperation and what differentiates it from other development assistance is that it does not make a distinction between our donor and recipient countries. Rather, it considers cooperating countries as equal partners. It represents a complementary form of development assistance, not a competitive form of cooperation. Mr. President, Countries of the South are engaging in collaborative development, shared models of innovation, cost-efficient financing solutions, collective learning experiences, capacity-building initiatives, and transfer of technology to support continued growth. Our diversity and commitment to each other offers a common agenda at the global, regional, and local levels. Our, operate, our cooperation goes far beyond financial co contributions. Countries of the South are integrating on policy matters that allows a sustained, transformative approach to development. As one of the smallest countries within the UN system and within the South, Antigua and Barbuda cannot overemphasize the importance of South-South cooperation. The devastating hurricanes of 2017 that destroyed much of the Caribbean and rendered the small island of Barbuda uninhabit uninhabitable at the time, brought to light the importance of South-South cooperation and the solidarity of countries of the South. While much of the developed world waited to respond to our immediate needs, partly because of our 
designation as a middle-income country that can no longer receive development aid, it is our neighboring CARICOM brothers and sisters that were first to respond. It was Venezuela and China, Cuba and India that mobilized support without delay. And it were our Latin American friends and Africa that showed solidarity in our darkest hour. Mr. President, it would be a missed opportunity for Antigua and Barbuda not to acknowledge our national friends from the North, for they too have played a role in our development and they have respected the important contribution that South-South cooperation plays. In 2015, when the world adopted the 2030 agenda that includes sustainable development goals, the Addis Ababa Action Agenda, the Sendai Framework, the Paris Agreement, and the 2014 Samoa Pathway, it became evident that there must be another complementary approach to development. For while some elements of the 2030 agenda provide a universal approach, much of the agenda pertains to the sustainability of countries from the South, and to achieve the development goals within the agenda, there must be an argument, an augmented approach to development. Triangular cooperation is one such element because it brings together the best of different actors, partners from the North and new and emerging partners from the South who have come together collectively to assist other countries from the South to share knowledge and implement projects that support the common goal of reducing poverty and promoting sustainable development. Nevertheless, no form of development assistance can overshadow the importance and respect for South-South cooperation. Mr. President, the UN system is an important anchor within the framework of South-South cooperation. The system should continue I thank the representative of Antigua Barbuda for his statement. And I, now I would like to give the floor to the representative of uh, the Republic of Korea. Mr. President, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the delegation of the Republic of Korea, I wish to express my sincere appreciation to, to you, Mr. President, and the government of the Republic of Argentina for hosting this meaningful conference. As the Buenos Aires Plan of Action document predicted 41 years ago, the plan is not a read once and put away document. It is rather a living document, still resonate with the constitutionally changing development context. I believe the BATA plus 40 will pave the way for mainstreaming South-South and triangular cooperation. And not just in the United Nations development system, but indeed in the majority of member states' bilateral cooperation modalities. The Korean government supports the adoption of the outcome document. Moreover, we fully con concur with the view that South-South cooperation is not a substitute but rather a valuable complement to North-South cooperation. South-South cooperation, which can also contribute to additional resource mobilization for the attainment of sustainable development goals, is indeed a valuable approach. In particular, Korea notes that the outcome document acknowledges the need to enhance the development effectiveness of South-South triangular cooperation. Korea actively spurs the Global Partnership for Effective Development Cooperation. <coughs> and the multi-stakeholder partnership as a useful means for the enhancement of development effectiveness. We also acknowledge the central role of the United Nations Office for South-South and Triangular Cooperation at the global and the UN system level. We believe there is a call to expedite efforts in formulating the United Nations system side strategy on South-South cooperation. We cannot emphasize enough the importance of monitoring and evaluation for the expansion of South-South and triangular cooperation in that there are challenges faced in the process of com coming up with the common methodologies. We are of the view that the 
United Nations Office play a central role in ensuring the coherence of monitoring and evaluation and its reporting throughout the UN system. Moreover, its data collection capability be strengthened. Before Korea moves, moved beyond being a recipient of ODA in 1999, we established COICA, a donor agency for international cooperation in 1991, and Economic Development Cooperation Fund, non-concessional loan in 1987. In this regard, it is natural and inspiring that many more countries are becoming dual countries by establishing donor agencies to expand South-South cooperation. In this regard, Korea is sharing the lessons it has learned from its experience of establishing donor agencies with the partner countries. We have also learned from our own experience of various projects the insight that incorporating South-South cooperation can serve to enhance the effectiveness of our bilateral programs. Korea has been regularly holding the Busan Forum as a voluntary contribution to the Global Partnership for Effective Development Cooperation since 2014. We have every confidence that this forum will be an excellent chance to explore new avenues for the strengthening, the broadening of the horizons of South-South and Triangular Cooperation. We look forward to it, generating renewed impetus as we embrace new pistas in pursuit of our common goals. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of the Republic of Korea for his statement, and now I would like to give the floor to the representative of Albania. Thank you, Mr. Chair, distinguished guests. With the adoption of Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development, the international community has set an ambitious and dramatically different framework for international cooperation. <clears throat> the achievement of the SDGs is a challenging process, and no country, no matter how big or developed, can address the eradication of poverty, climate change, violent extremism, international terrorism, and conflicts alone. In a globalized world, our vision and action need to be inclusive, concerted, and universal, and bring people, communities, and countries together in a more operational way through strengthening these important interconnections. Albania welcomes this conference and the adoption of the outcome document. This represents a timely new opportunity to jointly reflect on the spirit of this cooperation and look at other best practices that the joint cooperation brings even in smaller regions, such as the Western Balkans. The 2030 Agenda grounded spirit of the outcome document and its orientation on monitoring and reporting makes it a stronger advocate of the SDGs. Furthermore, the engagement of South-South cooperation member states in the global indicator framework for SDGs can become a successful practice also at the sub-regional level. In order to enhance the development effectiveness of our cooperation, we need to increase the mutual accountability and transparency as well as better coordinate our initiatives with other development projects and programs on the ground in accordance with our respective national development plans and priorities. In this context, we need to make the best use of the reform momentum of the UN system to further prioritize and incentivize real change through means that have proven to work. Albania has started to implement the SDGs at national, regional, and global level and has undertaken a series of reforms defined as priorities for the country. The National Strategy for Development and Integration 2015-2020 is an overarching document that ensures the combination of the European integration agenda with the SDGs. Reflecting the country's commitment to the Agenda 2030, the Albanian Parliament has unanimously approved a resolution confirming Albania's commitment to Agenda 2030. 
The EU accession process for the Western Balkans has proven to be a major accelerator for deepening the cooperation between the governments of the region for undertaking very important initiatives such as interconnectivity agenda and intensification of the people-to-people -people exchanges which are critical for stability, security and prosperity of Western Balkans. Based on EU cooperation spirit in our region, the countries of the Western Balkans are working together to enhance economic and trade exchanges. In the area of <coughs> environmental protection, <coughs> Albania, Croatia and Montenegro have signed agreements to work together to improve waste management and make our common coastline cleaner and better for tourists. We also share Lake Ohrid, one of the world's oldest lakes, and Lake Prespa with North Macedonia, and UNESCO has declared it as a joint transboundary biosphere in 2014. In the area of governance, we have a lot to learn from our peers. Albania has in recent years undergone a major municipal governance reform, and critical learning has come from other Eastern European transition economies that have gone through similar changes. Madam Chair, the world we live in today is interdependent and characterized by rapid changes. In this context, we need commonly agreed rules and effective global institutions to ensure stability, security, respect for human rights, prosperity and development. It is of the utmost importance that international organizations and forums operate through the rules and legal basis on which they have been founded. A rules-based international order is a safeguard for everyone. It acts as an enabler for both large and small nations alike to benefit from a safer, fairer and more sustainable world. Albania stands ready to do its part and cooperate with all those willing to invest in the future and make our world a better place for all. Thank you. I thank the representative of Albania, and now I give the floor to the representative of Bahrain. Thank you, Mr. President. At the outset, I would like to express my appreciation to the people and government of Argentina for hosting this conference. I would also like to thank the permanent representatives of Lithuania and Uganda and the co-facilitators for their work during the negotiations on the outcome document, which reflects the current trends for cooperation between countries of the South and triangular cooperation. It includes elements that would enhance this cooperation at the long run and that would help implement the Sustainable Development Goals. Allow me to refer to the report of the Secretary General on the state of South-South cooperation, which called for support by all stakeholders and enhancing the efforts of the UN and member states to enable countries of the South to acquire the necessary tools to combat poverty, achieve food security, and economic growth. 68% of people around the world are expected to live in urban areas by 2050, including the global South. We recognize that triangular cooperation complements and adds value to South-South cooperation by enabling developing countries to access further resources and capacities according to their needs to achieve national development. And the triangular cooperation contributes to enhance gender equality and empowering women and girls in sustainable development the second high-level United Nations Conference on South-South Cooperation held today 40 years following the adoption of the Buenos Aires Plan of Action will allow the international community to review trends and assess progress made so far to enhance development and to look at lessons learned when it comes to South-South cooperation, triangular cooperation, and determine new opportunities to achieve the 2030 Agenda. The Kingdom of Bahrain has been working with the UN 
the UN country team in Bahrain to, uh, to implement national initiatives with the private sector. We have spread awareness on the importance of the SDGs, and we have sought to integrate them in all our policies. We have had a successful partnership with the United Nations. We have signed the strategic partnership framework with the UN office, and this shows the great cooperation between us and the United Nations in our pursuit to achieve the 17th goal on partnerships for achieving the SDGs. And this, this partnership will enable all parties to provide technical expertise, transfer of knowledge and experiences, even providing the experience of Bahrain itself to other countries as a successful model to achieve the SDGs. The Kingdom of Bahrain has played an important role in the negotiations towards adopting the SDGs at the national, regional, and international level. We participated in the intergovernmental negotiations within the Open Working Group on the SDGs. We also hosted the second session of the Arab Forum for Sustainable Development, which resulted in the Bahrain document, including 19 recommendations on the most important issues related to sustainable development in Arab countries. We also represent the GCC countries and the IAEG on identifying indicators for SDGs, and Bahrain hosted the sixth meeting of this expert panel. We also hosted the political, the high-level political forum on sustainable development. We have also enhanced our partnership with the Office of the Resident Coordinator for the activities of the United Nations. And in October of 2017, we signed an agreement that is first of its kind at the regional level, including 16 UN ent entities in order to transfer the experiences of Bahrain to other countries and to provide global expertise to Bahrain to implement our government action plan for 2019-2022 and the Bahrain economic vision. In conclusion, we would like to reaffirm the importance of the role of South-South cooperation to achieve the SDGs to make sure that no one is left behind. It shows our commitment to work with other countries to share expertise and best practices and to make sure that we expedite the achievement of the SDGs. I thank you. I thank the representative of Bahrain for his statement. And now I would like to give the floor to the representative of United Arab Emirates. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may the peace, mercy, and blessings of God be upon you. At the outset, we would like to congratulate the Argentinian government on organizing this UN event. We align ourselves with the statement delivered by Palestine on behalf of the G77 and China. It is known that countries of the South have some, rather countries of the North has a lot of experience in providing foreign assistance. However, countries of the South has started to attract many attention in recent years through their financial support and innovative ideas on foreign assistance in the spirit of fraternity and solidarity. The UAE has emerged as a global leader in foreign assistance. We were among the largest providers of ODA, according to our GNI, in recent years. We are proud of this achievement, but even more, we are proud of the 
great and positive impact of our cooperation on our partners. For instance, allow me to recall the partnership fund between the UAE and countries of the Pacific, valued at 50 million US dollars. It includes 11 countries and it provides technical assistance to develop the sector of renewable energy in a region burdened by the hefty cost of diesel fuel. We, the fund has provided 6.4 megawatt of wind and solar energy, and this has assisted governments of the Pacific to provide $3.7 million annually to avoid the high cost of diesel fuel. These are the achievements that developing countries need, innovative ways to make sure that we reduce the environmental impact of economic growth. As a result of these positive achievements, we have made an agreement with countries of the Caribbean under the umbrella of the partnership fund between the UAE and countries of the Carib Caribbean for renewable energy valued at $50 million as well. It is the largest achievement and investment in the sector of clean energy. We also look to gauge the success of projects, not just based on their in outcome or services rendered, but their ability to use public funds to mobilize private capital so that they invest in many areas to help achieve the SDGs. We are also providing training sessions within these projects to build capacity and local expertise to operate and maintain services. To enhance our cooperation with countries of the South, we have hosted the Global Expo for Development based on South-South cooperation in Dubai in 2016. In this expo, 170 development initiatives were launched. We always welcome new partnerships and models for sharing best expertise and practices is the best way to work together in an impactful and effective way. As for our vision for the future, we look forward to enhance our cooperation with countries of the South through the Global Expo to be held in Dubai in 2020, which will be the largest of its kind hosted by the state of the UAE. About 25 million people will, are expected to participate in that expo, which will focus on movement, opportunities, and sustainability as the three drivers for human progress. Through our vision and projects, we want to show that countries of the South do own solutions for sustainable development. We look forward to working with you in Expo 2020 at the bilateral and multilateral level so that the world can witness the achievements that countries of the South aspire to make. I thank you. I thank the rep representative of, of United Arab Emirates for his statement. And now I would like to give the floor to the representative of Honduras. Mr. President, to your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, for me, it's a true honor to address you this morning. I feel very privileged to uh, make this statement on behalf of the government of the Republic of Honduras. I'd like to congratulate and uh, express our gratitude for the way in which to the government of Argentina for the very warm welcome it has uh, extended to all our delegations. We'd also like to uh, welcome the decision of holding the United Nations high, second high-level conference on South-South cooperation here in Buenos Aires, the place where uh, 40 years ago we 
we launched the type of cooperation that is known as South-South Cooperation today. This conference is a unique opportunity to highlight the valuable contributions of Southern countries and global efforts to achieve sustainable development. It's also a uh, historic opportunity to evaluate the progress achieved to date by a large number of con developing countries uh, in all regions of the world. And if and the effective implementation of our commitments to sustainable development, including in the framework of the 2030 Agenda. In Honduras, we, in Honduras, we believe that uh, an, es an essential part to understand South-South cooperation requires a new uh, a way in which we measure progress in sustainable development. We're convinced that economic growth in itself is not enough to measure progress towards sustainable development at all levels of uh, income per capita. Developing countries continue to uh, uh, meet challenges that include uh, obstacles uh, to eradication of poverty, inequality, external debt, and environmental inv vulnerabilities. Furthermore, the improvement of macroeconomic indicators not, does not necessarily reflect progress in eradicating poverty, given that the high, le high level of inequality including an increase in inequality, continue uh, to be present in countries that are classified as medium, middle-income countries, and even those countries with a, a very high level of economic growth. In Honduras, just as in other countries of Latin America and the Caribbean, South-South cooperation is a, an important tool in our foreign policy and important uh, uh, it, we have uh, designed it as a form of cooperation that complements rather than substitutes traditional uh, cooperation based on uh, demand, free of any conditionality, uh, based on horizontality principles of respect for sovereignty, national uh, ownership, and shared costs among the parties. We have uh, made huge steps to improve South-South cooperation compared to when it was first launched in the end of the 70s. Our cooperation uh, provides uh, uh, effective and innovative solutions, uh, um, especially in a, a challenging uh, uh, context such as the 2030 Agenda. Now, we have identified, uh, um, we've also uh, sought to uh, uh, strengthen our role as a provider of assistance and cooperation. We've, we have drawn up a inventory of good practices that have been uh, grouped in our a catalog called Sharing Honduras. We are currently working on the third version of that. Our challenge is to strengthen our uh, role as a provider of cooperation through our cooperation fund. We've begun to incorporate the 2030 Agenda throughout our state policies. And since 20, uh, starting in January 2019, Honduras has a policy of cooperation, which is currently being launched uh, and uh, uh, integrated in all institu institutions. Um, we uh, want to, in particular, uh, mention that uh, uh, we triangular cooperation must be made more dynamic uh, uh, and in contributing to the achievement of uh, uh, SDGs. I'd like to underscore that middle-income countries have a particular challenge in upcoming years. This is why it's important to work together and adopt common positions, as well as to play a leading role in the global cooperation systems by fostering more balanced and horizontal relations so that South-South cooperation uh, adds, v adds value in uh, uh, provides added value in uh, achieving the 2030 agenda. And we need not only to focus on GDP per capita in uh, uh, allocating uh, um, official development assistance. To conclude, I'd like to just highlight uh, the fact that South-South uh, and triangular cooperation is an important uh, foundation to achieve the SDGs and uh, uh, to meet the needs of the developing world through an exchange of experience while providing technical, financial, and human resources and ensuring that no country is left behind. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Honduras for her statement, and now I would like to give the floor to the representative of Pakistan.
Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished delegates and excellencies. At the very outset, I, I would like to thank the government of Argentina for their marvelous hospitality and enabling all delegates to come to this important occasion. This gathering is commemorating 40 years of BAPA and the adoption of the BAPA plan. And in the same spirit, I align myself as Pakistan commending with the statement of the delegation of Palestine on behalf of group of 77 and China. Also, I would like to appreciate and commend the outcome document of BAPA, which was made with consultation, great care, and transparency. Mr. President, I would just like to say that this gathering has been after 40 years. And in 40 years, many things have changed. Economies have changed, technology has changed, politics has changed. But what hasn't changed are the principles on which this gathering and this forum South-South is based upon. And that is why it's important for us in this forum to recognize and reinforce those principles because it's the principles which give us this opportunity to cope with the challenges and the changes that we are facing in today's world. So I would like to mention over here four principles which we need to reiterate as we move on. The first principle is the respect for national ownership and leadership. The very essence and spirit of South-South, which is voluntariness, is to be preserved. And that is why this forum is different from North-South forum. And our principles and our purposes are unique and we need to preserve them. So here we are not going to discuss uh, the ODA financial arrangements. We are going to discuss arrangements for six billion people on the earth which are part of this Global South Forum. Their aspirations, their dreams, their capacity building, and their future. The second principle that I'd like to uh, sort of discuss over here and we need to uh, focus on is the principle of mutual benefit. How as countries who are part of South-South Forum, we can create a win-win by collaborating, by cooperating. And here I'd like to bring into mind a, a, a cooperation mode that Pakistan has entered into, CPAC, which is China-Pakistan Economic Forum. And it looks as if it's for two countries, but what we have done is, based on this principle of win-win, we have invited other countries, and we are still inviting the South-South countries to join on this $65 billion dollar initiative, which is going to transcend boundaries. It's a triangular arrangement also. It's a multilateral arrangement also, with Saudi Arabia is joining in, as it is part of the One Belt, One Road initiative, which covers 152 countries. And so poverty alleviation, equality, capacity building, all the principles of the SDG goals are also covered by that. So I'm very confident that as we move on and more countries join us, this mutually beneficial partnership will increase. Also, I would like at this time to talk about the third principle, which is generosity and compassion to other countries who may be LDCs, who may be small islands of developing countries. We need to extend a hand to them. And Pakistan, as the biggest hospitable recipient of Afghan nationals as refugees in our country, despite the conflict going on, has proved its point, and UNCHR has recognized this, and this year we're going to celebrate 40 years of hosting these refugees. So compassion and helping out other countries is a principle South-South cooperation has always been proud of and should carry forward, and Pakistan very much associates itself with that. And finally, the fourth principle, which is basically cooperation itself is very powerful. And I'd just like to mention that climate change, which is one of the most difficult things these days, Pakistan, a very small contributor to it, but the seventh most risk recipient country to it has undergone, learned from other countries, borrowed some best practices, and today, after five years, Five years previously, we introduced one billion tree tsunami in Pakistan. And believe it, everybody laughed on it. 
And everybody said, we won't achieve 1 billion. And we didn't. We achieved 1.1 billion. And it was through green, green jobs. Women, 500,000 women got jobs. And it has revolutionized the economy. And today when we announced 10 billion tree tsunami, and the president, uh, UNGA kindly, uh, Maria Espinoza came and she also planted a tree. It reinforced our faith that if we cooperate and share best practices, we in South-South can outdo many countries all over the world. So here we are looking at this, these four principles and reinforcing. Mankind is cooperation. If you don't cooperate, you don't survive. So thank you very much. I thank the representative of, representative of Pakistan for her statement, and now I would like to give the floor to the representative of Libya. Say the Rais. Mr. President, I deliver this statement on behalf of the Government of National Reconciliation in Libya. I convey to you the greetings of His Excellency the President, Faiz Mustafa Asaraj, and the President of Foreign Affairs, Mohammed Al Tahir Sayala, as well as the greetings of the Libyan people and their wishes of best success for you in this conference. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, Heads of Delegations, ladies and gentlemen, at the outset, I would like to express our sincere appreciation to the government and people of Argentina for hosting this important conference. We'd like to thank them for the hospitality and the excellent organization. We align ourselves to the statement of Palestine on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. Mr. President, holding this second high-level conference on a south a south cooperation after 40 years of the first one hidden in Buenos Aires demonstrates the importance of the south south cooperation it gives us a chance to assess the different fields of cooperation and assess the progress made as well as identify challenges to achieve the SDGs in 2030 agenda stressing that the South, South cooperation aims to achieve the biggest goal, which is eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions. We stress that South, South cooperation complements and does not substitute the North-South cooperation, which remains to be the main channel in international development cooperation. Mr. President, my delegation stresses the importance of South-South cooperation and enhancing this cooperation to support the solidarity among South countries to achieve economic independence and self-reliance according to the common development goals of the South countries. Mr. President, once again, we emphasize that uh, the increased cooperation among countries of the South should not reduce the commitment of developed countries as well as the multiple development and financial institutions as well as bilateral and regional organizations to increase financial resources and technical cooperation to enhance South, South cooperation and triangular cooperation. Mr. President, this conference presents an opportunity to support developing countries in designing effective plans and strategies to enhance small and medium enterprises and build their capacities to achieve economic growth and industrial base. Cooperation among countries of the South and the triangular cooperation should be an effective way to achieve food security to respond to market needs in developing countries. Mr. President, South-South cooperation should help building capacities and 
increase human resources as well as create job opportunities while facilitating access to learning and the skill acquisition and drop and linking them to the labor market. SSC and uh, should present a, a forum to enhance the synergy in order to achieve a 2030 agenda. Mr. President, all of us in North and South should believe that the illicit financial flows impede economic development and reduces the mobilization of local resources to achieve sustainable developing development in developing countries. We stress the importance of work to exchange and share expertise and best practices to fight corruption and illicit financial flows and to enhance good practices on the recovery of stolen assets for the countries who have assets to use them in implement development plans and develop their infrastructure. Also, member states to the United Nations should should not be safe havens of stolen assets and the countries where the stolen assets have been used in should expose and disclose these assets and establish bilateral cooperation with the countries whose assets have been stolen. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Libya. And um, now I would like to give the floor to the representative of Canada. Bonjour, bon matin, excellent. Good morning. I'm offering Canada's condolences to the victims of the cyclone in Mozambique, Malawi, and Zimbabwe. Canada stands in solidarity with our brothers and sisters for the three countries and the families who are suffering and gri grieving. We have already committed to the Red Cross and the Central Emergency Response Fund. We also want to thank the government of Argentina for hosting this important conference in certainly one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Thanks and congratulations to my colleagues, Ambassador Ayibari of Uganda and Ambassador Plipite of Lithuania for co-facilitating the swift and successful negotiation of the conference outcome document. The adoption of the 2030 Agenda marked a consensus that uh, development is focused on the individual and our efforts to stimulate economic growth are connected to our efforts to reverse environmental degradation and in turn linked uh, to an equitable approach uh, to ensure that no one is left behind. Canada's feminist international assistance policy guides our international efforts to reach the Sustainable Development Goals. The policy reflects our belief that advancing gender equality and the empowerment of all women is not only the right thing to do, but also the most effective way to eliminate poverty and vulnerability. South-South and triangular cooperation are sine qua non conditions to take us away from the brink of unsustainability. If we want to win the fight against climate change, science tells us that at most we have two decades. So our work, all of us together, South-South, Triangular, North-South, can no longer be business as usual. Let me take one crucial dimension, financing. The Secretary General mentioned yesterday that a fundamental shift is needed in financing in the context of the fight against climate change. We know that the fight rests a lot on rapidly building sustainable infrastructure everywhere, but most importantly, in the South. Not building the needed infrastructure is not an option. So together, we need to work differently and with a greater sense of urgency. Public money represents only a fraction of what is needed. ODA is essential, it must grow, but in any scenario, remains largely insufficient. If you think that 7,000 billion of investments, 7,000 billion dollars of investments are needed to meet the SDGs, ODA currently at 145 billion represents only 2% of that amount. We need to get the private sector to understand that it is urgent 
that capital be better aligned with sustainable development. It is important that the private sector all over the world understand the risk of not acting. It is important that the private sector around the globe understands that climate change and the 2030 agenda represent a fantastic opportunity. All of us, governments, multilateral organizations and agencies, civil society in this room, a civil society, all of us in this room must work differently together and also with other partners. We're not so good as a government, the government of Canada, I can tell you that, we're not always that good at engaging with the private sector. This must change swiftly. We also need to change our approach to problems and be inspired by the Secretary General's agenda for prevention. For example, in the last 24 hours, both ministers and ambassadors of Mozambique and Indonesia told me that the world is there when needed for a response disaster, but the world is not there when there is a call to finance a preparatory disaster plan, response plan or to finance adaptation infrastructure. Yet, if you ask Antigua and Barbuda, who were devastated following Hurricane Irma, money was pledged, but 18 months afterwards, not much is felt on the ground. So Canada is sparing no effort to ensure that capital flows faster and more at scale in frontier and emerging market. We know that the money exists. We know that the countries from the south have a long pipeline of infrastructure project, for example. This is why, but the problem is the link between the money and the project, and that's why we're working at as Canadian. And I could give you a long list, but I'll we'll run out of time of what we do. And I just want to say at the end that Canada is seeking a seat to be elected on the UN Security Council. And if Canada is elected, we'll put economic security on the agenda of the Council. We all know that inequality is a root cause of conflict. Like climate change, this issue is critical for sustaining peace. Canada is committed to a more efficient, fairer, and more inclusive multilateralism. And finally, as Prime Minister would say if he were here, well, please remember that we're Canada and that we're here to help. Thank you. I thank the representative of Canada, and I now give the floor to the representative of Burkina Faso. Mr. President, I would like to, on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation, uh, uh, congratulate uh, the Argentinian government for the successful organization of this important meeting. Mr. President, the international community has, over the past few years, uh, been confronted uh, uh, with a number of uh, challenges have, that have a negative impact on sustainable development. Uh, I'm talking about terrorism, climate change, cross-border crime, uh, transnational crime, rather, and uh, uh, no country can uh, uh, cope with these uh, challenges alone. Mr. President, Burkina Faso uh, has uh, launched several initiatives to uh, implement the SDGs. Uh, the government has developed a national plan for economic and social development, which determines national priorities to three uh, major areas, uh, institutional reform, modernization of administration, development of human capital, and uh, uh, focusing on uh, key sectors for economic development. Uh, my country attaches a great importance to South-South cooperation, and uh, we intend to work with other developing countries to promote South-South cooperation and make it an essential aspect of implementing SDGs. It's with this in mind that the governments of Cote d'Ivoire and Burkina Faso have undertaken an original uh, experience of South-South cooperation by signing in 2008 a treaty of friendship and cooperation between the two countries. The implementation of this treaty made it possible to uh, uh, implement a major projects such as the building of a, of a motorway and a, a railway to foster uh, more trade among countries, also uh, um, uh, promoting training, of, vocational training of young people and others. And now, uh, beyond this uh, uh, unique experience between these two countries, Burkina has uh, uh, promoted excellent relations with other neighboring countries as part of efforts at economic integration and combating insecurity, in particular terrorism. 
Now, of course, we understand that without security, there's no development. And so Burkina Faso has worked with other countries of the region to combat terrorism. And that is why in this framework, uh, the joint G5 Sahel Force was created in order to pool efforts with Mali, uh, resources with Mali, Mauritania, Niger, and, Ch and Chad. Mr. President, the challenges for South-South cooperation are huge, uh, including meeting the fundamental needs of the population, uh, ensuring peace and security. This uh, cooperation should go beyond uh, more traditional forms of cooperation. This is why... Uh, uh, this conference is important, and we would encourage major uh, emerging countries such as uh, India, China, South Africa, and others to strengthen their cooperation with developing countries and to be more involved in uh, ta tackling the major challenges uh, on which the future of humankind will depend. I'm thinking of uh, threats to peace and security, climate change, and combating poverty. My delegate, In conclusion, my delegation would like to express our deepest condolences to the brethren, brother countries of Mo Mozambique, Malawi, and Zimbabwe uh, for uh, the devastating uh, effects of the cyclone they recently suffered and express our full support for them. Thank you. I thank the representative of Burkina Faso for his statement. And now I give the floor to the representative of Nicaragua. Señor Presidente. Mr. President, receive warm greetings from our president, Commander Daniel Ortega Saavedra, and from Rosario Murillo Zambrana, our Vice President uh, and the President of the People of Nicaragua. We wish to thank the government of Argentina for their hospitality and the organization of this meeting. We are also grateful for the work of the Secretariat and the co-facilitators. We wish them the greatest uh, success in their continued work. Likewise, we have noted and we are grateful for the final document which was circulated and which is to be adopted at this meeting, which will make it possible for us to have a horizon towards which we will continue pushing the strengthened South-South cooperation. Nicaragua associates itself, associates itself with a statement made by Palestine on behalf of the G77 in China. Forty years ago, we adopted the Buenos Aires Plan of Action, the most important milestone for economic and technical uh, cooperation between developing countries. Today, we meet again in the context of the implementation of the 2030 Agenda in order to review trends, lessons learned, assess progress, identify challenges, with a view to improving current institutional arrangements to effectively support South-South cooperation and promote Agenda 2030. We call to make the most of this high-level uh, meeting and uh, commit ourselves to the implementation of the strategy of BAPA and the Nairobi document in order to contribute to the SDGs, especially the eradication of poverty in our nations. Mr. President, we must recall that South-South cooperation is solidarity. It is a collective effort of developing countries. In the midst of their difficulties, limitations, and cultural diversity, developing countries are working for cooperation amongst themselves, structuring best practices in accordance with their experiences, needs, and abilities. We reaffirm that the diversity of views in the application of South-South cooperation is one of its advantages, making it possible for this cooperation to assume different forms, including knowledge exchange, exchange of experiences, training, technology transfer, and in-kind contributions from South to South. Mr. President, uh, SCC is no substitute for North-South cooperation, and it should not be studied or assessed uh, according to the standards or ruling North-South cooperation. We reiterate that in order to increase SSC and triangular cooperation, we need uh, official development assistance. So there should no be, uh, not be any stress on reviewing, reinterpreting, or even reducing ODA. 
In this framework of cooperation, we express concern at the imposition of uh, unilateral coercive economic measures which violate the rights of our peoples and become yet another obstacle to overcome to attain the SDGs. Mr. President, our region has uh, pushed forward innumerable South-South projects and actions. In a dizzying fashion, despite uh, non-compliance uh, of uh, developed countries with their obligations under ODA, this South-South solidarity should not be used to reduce cooperation by developed countries. Middle-income countries have been able to uh, have been forced uh, to rethink international cooperation at a time when uh, cooperation flows reflect ever more decreases in ODA and in assistance from the UN to Latin America and the Caribbean. At this point, uh, these trends uh, have to be studied, and even more uh, support should be given to these modalities of cooperation. Mr. President, Nicaragua has worked to deepen the definition of frameworks of cooperation, especially to guarantee their predictability and stability and respect for national development plans. Nicaragua calls for continued work on a true global alliance based on the solidarity of our peoples for South-South uh, cooperation to be another opportunity to put this into practice. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Nicaragua, and now I would like to give the floor to the representative of Venezuela. Mr. President, on behalf of the people and government of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, I would like to uh, convey to the delegations here greetings from Comandante President Nicola Maduro Moros. We'd also like to uh, uh, subscribe to the statement made by Palestine on behalf of G77 in China. We'd also like to uh, express our gratitude to the Republic of Argentina uh, for hosting this important conference. Mr. President, in a multipolar world, South-South cooperation should uh, not be uh, uh, subject to the whims of developed countries, uh, or it should not be a substitute to official development assistance. Uh, it should be seen as a vehicle to uh, promote economic and social development and eradicate poverty. Along these lines, the role of South-South cooperation and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development require uh, full respect for uh, international law. This makes it possible this to uh, this, may, this means that unilateral coercive measures are unacceptable, as those are applied to my country in flagrant violation of the purposes and principles enshrined in the United Nations Charter. It's important to uh, uh, mention this. Just to give some examples of such arbitrary unilateral measures, uh, uh, for example, the uh, unprecedented attack against the uh, oil and mining sector of Venezuela, which is the main source of public funds. Basically, it means a theft uh, of assets of our uh, the subsidiary of the Venezuelan uh, oil company uh, located in the United States. Uh, that is uh, basically a theft of some $20 billion, which is the property of the Venezuelan people. Now, for example, the the, the English Bank in the United Kingdom in an act of looting and colonial uh, theft uh, uh, basically uh, took some two billion dollars of uh, uh, Venezuelan uh, gold deposits. Uh, never ha has uh, uh, have the rights of develop for, to development and the human rights of its people been so openly flouted. Uh, 
to date, my country has lost some $24 billion as a consequence of these actions. This is the same type of uh, uh, measures that have been implemented against Cuba since 1962, against Chile between 1970 and 73, against Nicaragua starting from 1979, against Iran and Iraq since the 80s and various other countries, and more recently against Syria, Libya, and the uh, DPRK. In the context of aggression against our economy, the assault, really, the role of the United Nations is essential. And I can, and my country, in spite of uh, the assaults that it has been targeted, is, is actively working with uh, uh, the UN system uh, to uh, uh, implement the priorities of the H 2030 agenda. We believe that uh, uh, the South-South cooperation uh, is essential uh, um, because uh, it is fully in line with the Charter of the United Nations and it can play a very important role. We let you take this opportunity to thank the governments who, in a disinterested fashion, have, uh, have supported Venezuela in uh, these efforts. Uh, we consider in Venezuela that South-South cooperation uh, uh, promotes integration, promotes voluntary bilateral cooperation, respecting various forms of government and ideologies, and the principles enshrined in the UN Charter. For this reason, we believe that strengthening South-South cooperation in the framework of implementing the 2030 Agenda requires uh, a common effort of all countries. Venezuela asserts its uh, readiness to work uh, toward this aim. We need to commit ourselves to concrete actions without any discrimination or coercion, uh, uh, without interference in the internal affairs of other nations. We need to work towards taking into account the social, economic, and environmental uh, uh, dimensions uh, with a deep sense of social uh, uh, justice. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of Venezuela for his statement. Uh, that was the last speaker in the general debate for this meeting. Uh, we shall continue and conclude the general debate tomorrow morning, starting at 9 a.m. in this hall. And before adjourning, I would like to remind uh, the participants that interactive panel discussion three, entitled Scaling Up the Means of Implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development in Support of South-South Cooperation and uh, tri Triangular Cooperation, will take place at 3 p.m. in this hall. This meeting is adjourned.